Hello, the topic we are discussing today is cognitive theory of moral development as proposed by Piaget. The objectives of this module are, at the end of this chapter, students will know the stages of moral development as proposed by Piaget. They will understand what type of development occurs in a particular stage of life. They will be familiar with different concepts of moral development and they will know how different factors influence moral development according to his theory. Morality refers to the way people choose to live their lives according to a set of guidelines and principles that govern their decisions about right versus wrong and good versus evil. Moral development is the process through which children develop proper attitudes and behaviors towards other people in society based on social and cultural norms. As children's cognitive, emotional, social development continue to mature, their understanding of morality expands and their behavior becomes more closely aligned with their values and beliefs. Therefore, moral development describes the evolution of these guiding principles and is demonstrated by the ability to apply these guidelines in daily life. Jean Piaget, a Swiss psychologist famous for his research on cognitive development, explored how children developed moral reasoning. Jean Piaget rejected the idea that children learn and internalize the rules and morals of society by being forced to adhere to them, but he recognized that children learn morality by dealing with others in the group. He reasoned that there was a process by which children confirmed to society's norms of what is right and wrong and the process was active rather than passive. According to Piaget, children between the ages of 5 and 10 years see the world through the lens of a heteronomous morality. In this moral understanding, rules handed down by authority figures such as parents, teachers and elders are seen as absolute and unbreakable. Children accept that elders are able to make rules that last forever and that they do not change and must be followed. For most children, breaking the rules tend to lead to negative personal consequences and most children follow the rules as a way to avoid being punished. Towards the end of middle childhood, children's appreciation of morality changes as a result of their recently developed ability to view situations from others' perspectives. As children develop, their appreciation of morality becomes more autonomous, that is, self-directed. Piaget called this morality of cooperation. Starting at about ages 10 or 11 and continuing through adolescence, children will have generally begun to view moral views as socially accepted guidelines. Children using this frame of reference still feel that it is important to follow rules but these rules are viewed as complex, somewhat negotiable guidelines that are meant to improve everyone's lives. Children realize that making choices about following rules should be based on something more than fear of negative consequences or desire for individual gain. Decisions affect everyone and can benefit or hurt everyone. Piaget has proposed a theory involving invariant sequence of stages of moral development through which children progress as their cognitive capacities become increasingly sophisticated. He proposed a three-stage approach. The first being the pre-moral stage spans from birth to five years. Secondly, the stage of moral realism spans from six to ten years. Thirdly, the stage of morality of reciprocity or autonomous morality starts from 11 years onwards. Let us look at the first stage of pre-moral judgment which is found among preschool children. 
In this stage, children simply do not understand the concept of rules and have no idea of morality, internal or external. They show little concern for rules. They do not try to play a systematic game and they play with the intention of winning and gain satisfaction from the manipulation. They use different and strange rules to enjoy themselves. This stage coincides with the sensory motor and pre-operational stages of Piaget's cognitive theory. The child has a poor conception of other people's consciousness and is incapable of carrying out complex mental operations. Hence, it is impossible for them to have a sense of morality. Every time the child begins to play a game, they keep changing the rules according to their own interest. For example, while playing snake and ladder, they want to avoid losing and win at any cost, even if they have to manipulate by changing their position to climb up the ladder and win. Coming to the second stage of moral realism, which spans from 6 to 10 years, in this stage, the children understand the concept of rules, but they are seen as external, absolute and not to be questioned. They obey the rules that come from authority. And since a rule tells you what you're not supposed to do, moral realist children evaluate wrongdoing in terms of its consequences and not the intention of the wrongdoer. Children subscribed to the notion of imminent justice that means any deviation from rules would result in punishment. They think that someone or something is going to get them one way or the other. Such retribution might take the form of accidents or mishaps controlled by inanimate objects or by God. For example, if the child disobeys its parents and next day if any accident takes place, the child tends to understand or perceive the accident as a punishment from God due to his or her rude behavior towards the parents. The two factors that contribute to young children's moral realism are egocentrism, that is, inability to subordinate their own experiences and perceive situations as others would do, that is, they cannot understand others' perspective. Secondly, immature way of thinking which leads them to confuse external reality with their own thought processes and subjective experiences. Therefore, children in this stage perceive rules as given by authority and that they cannot be changed or questioned. They believe in immediate justice and perceive any accident as punishment for their wrongdoings. They cannot understand others' perspective and confuse external reality with their subjective thoughts and experiences. Coming to the third stage of morality of reciprocity, which begins from 11 years onwards, this stage also corresponds to the concrete and formal operational stages of Piaget's cognitive theory. Morality of reciprocity. In this stage, moral judgments are now characterized by the recognition that rules are arbitrary agreements which can be questioned and changed. They realize that obedience to authority is neither necessary nor always desirable and that violation of rules are not always wrong nor are they inevitably punished. They start to develop their own internal morality which is no longer the same as external rules. A major development is that actions are now more evaluated in terms of their intentions which is seen as a more sophisticated view of morality. Adolescents develop a firm concept that Punishment specifically fits the crime and believe in equalitarianism, which is equal justice for all. For example, adolescents are reluctant to follow the rules and rituals told by their parents and justify that there is no hard and fast rule to follow them and that they can be modified according to their own convenience. Now what is the basis of this moral theory? There were two lines of research that were conducted. The first was to observe children of different ages while they were playing marbles and then ask them questions about the rules of the game. It was found that 
children younger than 5 years essentially had no rules at all. For those between 5 and 10 years, there were rules, but the children saw them as fixed. Finally, by the age of 10, the children were able to think of their own rules and recognize that these could be adopted by mutual consent. The second line of research was presented to the children as moral dilemmas, which consisted a pair of stories. In one story, a child deliberately caused a small amount of damage. That is, in the first story, once there was a little boy whose name was Henry. One day when his mother was out, he tried to get some jam out of the cupboard. He climbed upon a chair and stretched out his arm but could not reach it. And while he was trying to get it, he knocked over a cup, the cup fell down and broke. In the other story, the damage was accidental but much greater. In story 2, a little boy who is called John is in his room. He is called to dinner and he goes into the dining room. But behind the door there is a chair and on the chair there is a tray with 15 cups on it. John has no idea about it. He goes in, the door knocks against the tray, all cups are broken. Piaget asked children which of these characters deserved to be punished the most and tried to find out not just their answers but the reasoning they used to arrive at them. Piaget found two main differences in how children thought about moral behavior. Firstly, very young children's thinking is based on how actions affected them or what the results of an action were. For example, young children will say that when trying to reach for a forbidden cookie jar, breaking 10 cups is worse than breaking one. They also recognize the sanctity of rules. For example, they understand that they cannot make up new rules to a game and that they have to play by what the rule book says or what commonly is known to be the rules. Piaget called this moral realism with objective responsibility. Children evaluate seriousness of an act or behavior in terms of its consequences rather than according to the good or bad intentions of the actor. Older children look at motives behind actions rather than the consequences of actions. They are also able to examine rules determining whether they are fair or not and apply these rules and their modifications to situations requiring negotiation assuring that everyone affected by the rules is treated fairly. Piaget felt that the best moral learning came from these cooperative decision-making and problem-solving events. He also believed that children developed moral reasoning quickly and at an early age. Unlike other theories which emphasize the role of parents in moral development, Piaget focuses on the contribution of peers. Away from moral absolutism, realism and egocentrism, moral development can occur in interpersonal relationships. The children can compare their point of view to others. And through cooperation and shared decisions, the children become sensitive to multiple roles, needs and feelings they have in common with others. They realize that the same act may be perceived in a variety of ways by different people and lead to different results. The increased ability to make inferences about others is based on the cognitive development and improved intellectual ability of children to solve a variety of intellectual problems. It is also related to children's motivation to understand others and acquire social skills as well as realization of different emotional behaviors. As children become less dependent on adults, there will be increased feelings of control and participation in decision making as well as growing ability to take on new roles that enhance their respect for themselves and for others. It frees them from the domination of external authorities and leads to a sympathy and concern in intentions as well as in actions. Mutual harmony and respect 
which is so critical in developing a sense of social justice can only occur when children free themselves from the relation of unilateral authority with adults. Parents' egalitarian relationship accelerates the acquisition of reciprocal morality. Both of these methods used by Piaget have been criticized. Many people have claimed that games of marbles do not represent a child's entire perception of morality. It has been claimed that younger children only focused on consequences because, given that the story was narrated, it was much easier for them to understand the consequences than the character's intentions. Thirdly, it is based on moral universals, which may be in fact culture-specific. It has been claimed that moral development of children in non-Western cultures may be different from that of the children whom Piaget investigated. In conclusion, we can say that Piaget's theory of moral development emphasizes on the importance of peer interaction and egalitarian relationship with adults as children progress from one stage of moral development to another systematically.